The debate over Confederate monuments, much like our country at the moment, is bitterly divided, with monument defenders on one side embracing these statues as passive reminders of so-called Southern heritage, and the black community and those working for racial justice on the other side, arguing that Confederate monuments are actually active incitements to racial division and violence. How have we arrived at these two opposing narratives? This division, as I've discovered in doing the research for the book, really goes all the way back in the decades after the Civil War. On the one hand, white Southerners were devastated by defeat. And as part of that, of recovering from that, this mythology known as the Lost Cause was created to assuage defeat among white Southerners. And Confederate monuments became part of that. And so some of the mythology of why the Confederacy went to the, uh, fought the Civil War, why states seceded, uh, has always been in their mind about states' rights. And then the monuments themselves become about these military heroes, men like Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson, or even just local community heroes. And so those monuments then become imbued with these ideals that are based in mythology and not the reality of of the Civil War. That's on the one side. On the other side, African Americans view the Civil War as absolutely about slavery and not states' rights. And the Civil War resulted in the emancipation of four million slaves. So for African Americans primarily, and they've been joined in more recent years by more of a plurality of, of Southerners, they see these monuments as representing men who went to fight in a war to perpetuate human slavery. You observe that while local sentiment in many towns across the South supports the removal of these monuments, of which some 750 to 800 remain, Doing so has been intentionally complicated in recent years. How exactly? Since 2015, the uh, states across the South have passed monument laws or heritage protection acts that prevent local governments from removing a monument. Almost every state has one uh, where there are Confederate monuments, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, etc. And so that has prevented people of goodwill in a community who want to remove a monument because of its divisiveness to do so. The debate over the fate of Confederate monuments has waxed and waned over the past century, with neither side able to claim what might be considered a decisive and lasting victory. Do you believe this current moment is different from those that preceded, that we're approaching something closer to a consensus? on the issue? I'd like to believe that we are achieving some sort of consensus, but I do believe we are as divided as ever. Um, the George Floyd killing uh, led to the Black Lives Matter protests, which in the South was a protest against Confederate monuments, because communities of color see in these monuments the same issues that were involved in the George Floyd killing, systemic racism and white supremacy. So while there was progress made in the months um, after the George Floyd killing and the um, removal of numerous monuments across the South, there are still hundreds of them in place. They continue to be divisive. The laws of, that have been passed in states have prevented their removal. And so in some ways, 2020 might as well be 1870 in terms of how people feel about these monuments. You've been listening to a conversation with Karen Cox, author of the new book, No Common Ground, Confederate Monuments and the Ongoing Fight for Racial Justice.